Thanks, Helen. Thanks, Helen, and, uh, and hi, everyone. Uh, uh, great uh, that everybody's joined us today. We've got a really healthy number of people joining us. A reminder that we've got with us uh, Pete Beaumont, Chris Gent, and Phil Wilby from WDH. And a reminder, too, that this is um, the latest in a series of webinars we've done this year, profiling the winners um, of our UK Housing Awards. Muted. Um, uh, we've had some fantastic, uh, fantastic <laughs> webinars, and this is the latest in those. So I think Pete, Chris, and Phil are, are going to give us a presentation. But the key thing here is there's a, a great number of you, and we'd really love to hear from as many of you as possible. So as the presentation is is going on, please do uh, feel free to use the question uh, pane to ask your questions, and we'll we'll get to those uh, as soon as we can. So uh, hi to Pete, Chris, and Phil, and over to you. Morning, well, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining us today. We're really pleased to see so many of you signed up. So here's a picture of us all there. We've already had introductions done, so we'll move on quickly from that. And I'll pass you over to Phil to give you a bit of background about WDH and Wayfield. Good morning, everybody. So just a bit of background about Wayfield this is housing and who we are as an organisation. Uh, we're the fifth largest LSBT landlord in England, having transferred from the local authority in 2005. Uh, we currently own over 31,500 properties and manage and maintain over 42,000 properties through our Northern Shared Services Cost Sharing Group. Uh, when we originally transferred from the local authority, uh, the, the intention was to improve our housing stock. And since transfer, we've spent over £700 million on improvements, bringing our housing stock up to the Wakefield standard, above the government's decent home standards. However, for us, it's always been about more than just bricks and mortar, as embodied by our organisational vision to create confident communities. Beyond what would be expected of a traditional landlord, we always look to be a trailblazer organisation that doesn't just put a roof over our tenants' heads, but builds sustainable communities within which our tenants and residents can thrive and reach their full potential. Part of this process involves embedding the EFQM model to achieve sustainable excellence across our business. This process culminated in 2015 when we won the EFQM Excellence Award in the same company as organisations such as BMW, Bosch and Coca-Cola. Since then, however, we've not become complacent and have looked to look to innovate. Which brings us on to the, the challenges that we're facing in Wakefield, which are considerable. Our properties are predominantly within the Wakefield local authority area district and a, a historically industrialised area typified by mining towns. In some areas of the district, the loss of the coal industry can still be felt with impacts on local industry and unemployment rates. As such, Wakefield was assessed by the indices of multiple deprivation as the 67th most, most deprived local authority area in England, with 14% of the district's population living in areas most, the most deprived 10% in the country. Over 12,000 children in the district live in households claiming out-of-work benefits, whilst the estimated 25% of children in Wakefield live in poverty, and in some areas this rate is over 50%. As such, many of our tenants are facing significant financial hardship and financial and social exclusion, meaning that many of our tenants need the support that we provide in order to sustain their tenancies, contribute to the local community and also get closer to the labour market. Good morning, everybody. So as you see on the screen, this is our bespoke approach to income management, and you'll see it's a shared approach between our debt team and Cashwire Services. Um, it's made up of four quadrants, culture, automation, innovation and evolution, driven by a robust performance management framework and strong core IT system. We're now going to look at each of these sections in more detail. So starting off with culture, here at WDH we believe it's vital to create a positive culture, which is why the culture is, is the foundation of our overall approach to income management. As a service area, we've recruited from the public and private sector to provide specialist skills and balance to our overall operational delivery. Recruitment takes place by assessment centre to assess competency and practical ability, which provides an additional layer of assurance for the service area. By having staff interested and motivated in the role, we believe that we can drive all elements of our approach. So what have we done? We've created highly motivated staff engaged in our service area that work evenings and weekends as part of their normal week on demand for our customers. We've also carried out quality assurance framework exercises and these are linked to our performance management framework based on our core beliefs, expectations and values, ensuring consistent and exceptional operational delivery. To underpin all this, we carry out localised huddles away from the office and target specific training and leadership exercises all this opens up a relaxed forum for staff to promote their ideas. 
We've established and created a debt support team that deals with arrears cases from £25 to £200 via outbound telephone calling. This provides a low-cost solution to the smaller technical debts and provides early intervention and stops escalation to our visiting officers. The team has excellent success performance at 0.54%, less than one day per full-time equivalent at year to date, demonstrating a flexible service with happy staff going the extra mile for WDH and its customers. We've delivered and implemented mobile technology across the service area. We don't use third-party suppliers for any of our IT, so we've no hidden costs, meaning that we retain a low overall operational cost. We're performance-driven, we should never miss a key business target, despite the challenges of the 1% rent reduction and the ongoing welfare reforms, meaning we have a positive mindset, driving a positive performance culture. As such, we've developed natural trigger points for early intervention with our internal partner, which is Cashwise, reducing enforcement actions whilst increasing tenancy sustainment. And over to Pete now, I was going to talk a little bit more about culture. Thanks, Chris. So in 2013, following, following an identified need across the district, WDH took on three years of funding from the big lottery to create our Cashwise service. And this was in response to welfare reform and to tackle the low levels of financial confidence of people living in our properties. Cashwise worked hard to tackle the intergenerational habits that can be seen across the district in relation to poor financial choices. By adopting a test and learn approach, we've continually developed and enhanced our support offer by responding to the needs of people living across Wakefield. The team delivers tailored support, primarily in the form of one-to-one -one outreach work, but also delivers a range of engaging workshops and community events to improve financial confidence and tenancy sustainment. Due to the success of the team, WDH made Cashwise a permanent frontline team within the organisation and expanded the service to meet increasing demand for support across our districts. A big part of our success is our embedded positive culture across the business. We have a team of motivated and passionate officers who are experts in their field and dedicated to reducing the impacts of poverty on our estates. The team provides support for, one of our most, for many of our most vulnerable tenants who are potentially at risk of losing their properties due to high levels of debts, arrears or loss of income. Our support often uncovers a number of wider issues, such as low-level mental health and well-being concerns, which in many cases can be linked to financial worries. We're very fortunate due to the forward-thinking nature of the organisation that we have internal specialist well-being and mental health teams that we can refer into to deal with these issues before tenancies become unsustainable. We're now going to move on to our next quadrant in our approach and talk about how we use automation with our income management processes. So I'll hand you back to Chris. Okay, here at WDH, we're always looking to automate appropriate processes or services to free up capacity, deliver value for money without the need for additional staffing resources. So what have we done to, to deliver that? We've 97% automated the arrears process within our income management system, it provides value for money, giving additional staff capacity to focus on com complex customer needs and caseloads. The overall arrears process is administered by one senior officer on a Sunday, administering over 15,000 arrears cases in under one hour. The visits are downloaded to visiting officers' mobile devices on Sunday afternoon by automated batches, meaning staff can hit the ground running first thing on Monday. There's no waste and it's an increased value for money for the organisation. To complement this, we've created our own bespoke arrears logic that drives efficiency and segments debt via arrears thresholds or stages. The system is agile and intelligent using progression and regression rules which means that customers always receive the appropriate form of action that reflects their debt position. Consequently, this improves satisfaction levels while reducing form of complaint this year to zero. Automated text messaging routines around the arrears logic provide multiple contacts in a week. We've just introduced a negative contact that mirrors private companies' approaches, as in a text message is immediately sent after a negative contact is updated on the tablet device. This often prompts contact while officers are still in the location, reducing waste and time for both WDH and its customer. We've continued to develop our mobile solution, as in that we can now update income and expenditure form, integrate referral forms to Cashwise and partners, update arrear stages, set arrangements, create diary notes, carry out benevolent fund applications and DHP applications, all from the comfort of a customer's home. We're constantly looking at enhancements that free up capacity to deal with the complex challenges of welfare reform without having to increase resources. I was just out to Pete, who's going to finish off on automation. Thanks, Chris. So all of our cash-wise officers have tablet devices and make use, make use of the total mobile system that Chris has just touched upon. 
And this enables us to keep the debt team aware of any progress made with a customer and helps to avoid duplication of work across the business. As soon as the debt officer establishes a tenant is in financial difficulty and in need of further support, they can send a referral from their tablet device, which generates an email in the cashwise inbox with the referral information attached. If a struggling customer is not picked up sooner, a referral is also generated when arrears levels reach £450. Referrals from our debt team equates around 30% of the annual referral received into the team each year. And this close working relationship has really helped us establish that balance uh, between perfect balance right, between traditional rent collection and additional financial support needs. Working in this way has resulted in our lowest ever eviction rates as an organisation across the last financial year. Cash rise in many cases has provided a foot in the door with tenants that have been previously hard to reach due to not engaging with other parts of the business. In response to increasing demand, we have streamlined our processes by introducing office-based phone triaging and a four-visit process per customer wherever possible. Cash buyers work hard to maximise the income, improve the situation of our tenants, and the team are trusted referrer trained to allow a speedy resolution to local welfare provision and discretionary housing payment applications through Wakefield Council. Our dedicated cash rise financial inclusion website allows tenants to self-refer for support quickly and easily. We also use Facebook to reach a wider demographic of tenants, which provides another means for tenants to contact us and engage with the team. You can see on the screen now the self-referral mechanisms uh, that we use on our website and social media. And we find that these are particularly useful for those tenants who don't have the confidence to pick up the phone and talk about the financial difficulties, or if they don't have any credit on their phone to make a call in the first place. Website referrals uh, send a notification to our inbox and a member of the team can call the tenant back as soon as possible. Self-referrals equate to approximately 20% of the annual cash rise referrals received and this is increasing year on year. For anyone on our waiting list, we've also created a text messaging routine which sends a message to keep people updated on the progress of their referral. So we're now ready for our first poll of the webinar, so I'll hand you back over to the CIH. Thanks, Pete. Sorry for the delay there. We're just now going to put forward a poll to everybody, so look out for that. Um, it should be coming through to you just now, and we'd be delighted to hear your, your response, and obviously we will, uh, we will update you with the results uh, at the appropriate time. Okay, thanks for everybody. Pretty much everybody um, took part in that. Some interesting results there. 49% of you said yes, 11% uh, of you said no, and 37% of you said that some form of it was in development. Uh, so some interesting stuff there, um, if, you, uh, if you'd like to carry on. Okay, thank you. So the next section of our approach to income management, uh, income management is innovation. So I'm going to hand you over to Chris now, who's going to start off chatting about innovation. Innovation is, is paramount to, the, uh, to make our services lean, efficient, and deliver overall business targets and objectives. Uh, we believe it's important to empower staff in order to harness and deliver their ideas to change service delivery and also improve it. So what have we done here at WDH? Well, we've utilised behavioural insight theories to drive payments and contacts via text messaging and letters. We've created innovation culture so that staff, staff drive service delivery and feel empowered to bring positive ideas and development. And, and by that, we don't just mean bring them, we mean bring them to fruition and actually implement the service delivery. We also offer a consultancy service that has assisted over 50 organisations and delivered over 580k and additional funds for the WDH bottom line. Every intervention demonstrates a 50% improvement in the organization's arrears and management costs, and we're looking to develop this further in the future. 
uh, bespoke an innovative response to the introduction of universal credit is our UC hub screen, which forms part of our UC support hub, which we launched this year. And Phil's going to be talking about this in more detail at the end of the presentation. We've also developed a bespoke areas benchmarking tool. This tool was designed to interrogate the total debt landscape, inclusive of write-offs, credit balances, third-party supply costs, with the aim to give a true net debt perspective for a property. Um, and this um, template has been adopted by the Northern Landlords Benchmarking Group. I'm going to pass you over to Pete now for the rest of innovation. So any, any referrals relating to universal credit are generated through the bespoke UC hub screen that Chris has just touched upon there. Um, and this sends a notification to the CashWise inbox. Following that, all tenants identify as claiming UC are contacted by a member of the team within five working days to offer support. Today, we've had a 41% uptake of UC related support. The primary method of support provided by CashWise is one-to-one -one home visits. However, the team, as mentioned previously, do deliver a range of engaging workshops at community locations across the district. We cover a wide range of topics such as banking, budgeting, loans and lending, cooking on a budget and even basic DIY so you can ensure tenants have to save a little bit of money around the home. We have delivered close to 500 work CashWise workshops to date since 2013. The support provider team really helps to empower our tenants with skills and confidence to take control of their finances. In 2015, CashWise was highly commended nationally at the Business and the Community Awards in London in the Building Stronger Communities category. We were up against strong competition from large national organisations in Tesco's and Lloyd Banking Group. This was an achievement we're particularly proud of as a team. We received re-accreditation from Business and the Community in both 2016 and 2017 for showing ongoing development as a service. CashWise engages and supports tenants in a creative way and continually strives to uh, improve the support offer and service delivery across the district. To understand the issues faced by our tenants, we've delivered a series of forums to, to establish the key problems that affect tenancy sustainment from their perspective. The headline issues reported back by tenants were that juggling bills and debts, benefit cuts and loss of income, cooking up with food on a budget, social isolation in a new area, and the trap of high interest loans were the key issues that they were facing. Off the back of these problems, we created a series of short animated clips, which we use as a call to action to promote cash rise and the support that we can provide to overcome these issues. We also give tenants the opportunity to do voice over the, for these clips and currently use them on our website and social media platforms. Through close partnership working with our local credit union, we now have the credit union working out of our WDH digital hub in the centre of Wakefield, which provides access uh, to affordable credit for our tenants and helps to avoid usage of high interest or unlicensed lending. We've recently launched our Cashwise Schools Delivery Programme in partnership with a local social enterprise and this covers financial capability, careers and employability skills. With around 40% of the young people in schools across Wakefield living in WH property, this programme will really help to upskill potential future tenants with the skills and competence to manage their money and sustain a tenancy. Another provider of innovations is our CashWise database. Uh, we launched this uh, financial inclusion database this year, and this really streamlines our workflow to free up more office time to take on additional cases and support our tenants. This is a purpose-built system, uh, and it enables us to manage our waiting list and customer contacts efficiently, as well as record all aspects of the support we provide, financial outcomes for tenants, and valuation data to enable us to measure the full impact of the service for our customers and the wider business. The financial inclusion database also provides instant reports for overarching team and each individual officer, which helps us to continually improve our performance output. I touched a little bit on the website previously in terms of referring, but this is our dedicated CashWise website, and this has been designed, developed and tested with our tenants. The four headline topics that we use on the site are help with managing money, cooking out food on a budget, job advice and help with benefit issues. The website's also got an easy to use budget calculator, a range of healthy recipes and various useful information as well as, as mentioned previously, the self-referral mechanisms to get in touch with the team. In addition to the website, the team regularly posts useful information on our Cash Files Facebook page as we find this is another channel to reach a wider audience. And having established that video content tends to engage tenants uh, more effectively, we've run a series of top tip video campaigns which have reached over 13,000 people on social media so far. Our innovations are educating and empowering our tenants, whilst also giving the opportunity for them to interact and engage with the team. So we're now ready for our second webinar poll, so I'll pass you again back to the CIH. 
Yeah, thanks again, Pete. So our second uh, poll question is uh, is coming up, which is, do you have a bespoke system for recording reporting on financial inclusion support? So again, we'll leave it open for about a minute and then we'll report back on the results. Thanks again, everybody, for voting. And we can see from the results that 30% of you said, yes, you do have a, a system for recording reporting on financial inclusion support. 55% uh, of you said you don't. Um, and 9% uh, of you said you didn't know. 6% said you had something in development. Pete, I just wondered, before you carry on, is that interesting to you to see that more than half of the people here actually don't have uh, a bespoke system? Yeah. And I just wondered what your thoughts were on that. Yeah, well, basically, we. we create the system so that we can report on this sort of work and I think it's quite a challenging thing to show to the businesses around the around the country that, that it's really making a real impact and it obviously it links into our UC support hub approach and helps to combat obviously the effects that tenants are having with universal credit so we find that having this system is really beneficial to us to kind of marry up with the existing systems we've got internally for other frontline teams but obviously really show the full fruits of the labour really for, for the cash rise team across the district. That's really helpful. Thank you. If you want to, uh, if you want to carry on, go ahead. Yeah, no problem. Um, so we're now going to move on to talk about how we continually evolve our services to improve performance and our offer to tenants. So I'll hand you back to Chris. Thanks, Pete. So here at WDH, we believe that uh, we need to keep services moving forward. We need to ensure the service provision is future-proof to meet the increased demand of WDH and its customers. So what are we thinking of doing or what have we got in the pipeline? Well, we want to introduce dynamic scheduling to integrate with the mobile devices so that we can ensure resources are target, targeted efficiently and effectively. So to mirror logistical companies and maximize resources for debt, debt recovery, particularly around former tenants that might be outside the traditional Wakefield boundary. We want to create an on-demand product for debt and cash wise services linked to our app or online accounts, provide our customers with the facility to see where staff are in relation to their property and be able to book them in real time, providing an estimated arrival time. This will completely change the way we deliver our services and provide customers in need an opportunity to get services when they actually need it. We also want to move to a virtual debt service with interactive voice messaging, a mandatory digital switch and sign up for all our online products. Increase the self-service side of it so customers have increased opportunity. We want to integrate auto dialing software within our low level calling team to increase efficiency and maximize performance. We also want to continue our journey towards behavioral insight and learn from previous studies and overlay this within our processes to nudge people into support and make payments, making the right decisions at the right time. We want to develop uh, performance um, management system that has the ability to create a matrix that meets the requirements for WDH in terms of analysis of UC and the fundamental changes this will bring to, to our organization and I'm sure yours. And we also want to, want to expand our consultancy offer to increase service provision. I'll pass you back to Pete now to talk a little bit about Cashwise's evolution. So it's really important for Cashwise to continually evolve to meet the changing needs of our tenants across the district. Uh, we're going to utilise specialisms within teams to respond to welfare reform issues, and in particular, universal credit once in the full digital service next year. A major focus moving forward will be to provide more in-depth digital support as part of our Cashwise office of visiting role. This is to ensure our tenants have access to the required services and to, the, and to support the digital by default direction of both job and benefit application processes. A cash rise database that I just touched on previously will really help us drive performance output and record our outcomes more efficiently for the business, as well as highlight any areas to improve for both individual officers and at team level. 
We're going to continue to work in partnership with our debt recovery service, uh, and this will ensure that we're providing targeted support for those most in need across the industry before tenancy can become unsustainable. So having discussed the four aspects of our approach to income management, we're now going to discuss how this drives our performance. So I'll hand you back to Chris. Okay, so performance is, is the driver for the whole approach and it's key to, uh, to maximise our uh, outputs. So this is a review of our 2016-2017 performance. So you'll see that last year, current tenant performance tenant arrears were 1.3 million under the agreed corporate targets. That translates for current tenant arrears at 2.68% as a percentage of our overall rent roll. We uh, increased cash collection by over £2 million pounds when compared to the same week last year. We've increased current tenant credit balances in preparation for the introduction of universal credit to £2.5 million with over 10,000 cases in credit. When we look at former tenant arrears, you'll see that they're 2.2% of our overall rent roll and these are reducing during this year. We're particularly proud of the amount of former tenant we've cash we've collected which has increased by four percent to seven hundred and fifteen thousand and um that's obviously driven that there are individual transactions which have reached a new high of thirty eight thousand for former tenant arrears so we're now going to look at um sort of another element of performance which is our activity because we believe looking at productivity impacts on key arrears processes so last year we carried out forty one thousand uh, arrears visits which was an increase of 1,380. There was an increase of incoming calls into the service area with 46,500 46, calls made and handled by our team, which was a 3,500 um, increase in terms of calls. We've also made from our low level calling team over 103,000 outbound calls. So obviously, we, 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 we captured an element of debt and stopped that from escalating, hopefully. Um, we've sent over 212,000 low-cost automated text messages and ensure we reach customers on multiple occasions per week. And so in terms of the key process that we're talking about, this has translated and, and meant that um, in terms of notices of seeking possession, we've reduced them last year by 335. We've also reduced the number of cases we've submitted to court by 170, which, as you will all be aware, has associated savings of around £55,000. We've also reduced the eviction levels by 49% to 56, actually carried out for arrears, saving the organisation over 440,000 in associated costs. We believe this demonstrates the impact of our approach and the positive impact on tenancy sustainment. Now, we've got two tables here just to show uh, the current tenant arrears performance since the central debt team and cash price came to fruition. And you'll see there that they've been gradually reducing for current tenant arrears. And we've got the same again for former tenant arrears. So all in all, a positive impact for our bespoke approach to income management. Our passion to P now is going to finish off on performance. So the last four years, Cashwise have supported almost 4,000 of our vulnerable tenants, uh, potentially at risk of losing their properties. And it's been done primarily through one-to-one -one support and obviously a range of workshops across the district. In terms of the inbound referrals into the team, approximately 70% of our referrals come from internal WDH teams and 30% from external partners or self-referrals. As you can see from the chart, uh, our two main referrals come from our internally, obviously our debt, debt team that in, uh, refer 30% per year, and the next best is obviously self-referrals, and that's tw at 20%. Some of the other external referrals include NHS services, early health hubs, and food banks. Uh, and we've had to establish a two-way referral process with our local food banks, with the team having to access more emergency food parcels for struggling tenants, uh, and in particular since the launch of Universal Credit. So looking at some of the reasons that we get referrals into Cashwise for support, um, welfare reform and benefit issues are the most common reason at 43%, uh, with other reasons linked to rent to raise, budgeting support, debt, and Universal Credit of more recent. So in terms of our performance on the 2016-17 financial year, um, we supported 1,081 people, which is our highest annual total today. And we delivered over 3,000 visits and 35 community-based workshops. The team supported tenants with over 2,000 calls to other agencies to resolve financial difficulties. And what we try and do so we can really show another way to show the full picture about the support we're providing is to calculate social return on investment for each year. And obviously, for the last uh, for last financial year, our social return investment calculation shows that for every one pound we spent on services, saw a return of six pounds ninety six, which is obviously a real big achievement. 
We've also collectively accessed over £600,000 in discretionary housing payment, which obviously is a big, big win for the organisation and really helps to keep that rental income as high as possible. So in terms of performance, each year since the team's formed, obviously we've been receiving more and more uh, referrals for support from Cashwise. Uh, home through referral rates have increased by over 400% between 2013 and 2017, which resulted in WDH investing in the team to meet this demand. In terms of uh, in income maximisation for our tenants, we've had some fantastic outcomes uh, which have really supported our tenants since the team was formed in 2013. In the last financial year, we surpassed a million pound mark in accessing benefits, grants and utility savings for our tenants. So it's all in all helped to improve their tenancy system and, and help them to actively participate in society. So we're now going to move on to the final part of our webinar, which is show you how we've really applied our approach to income management to develop a UC support hub this year in response to universal credit. And our UC support hub is a custom uh, built responses uh, which we've launched to face the challenges of our tenants and for the business in terms of universal credit. So I'm going to pass you over to Phil, who's going to run you through this approach. Thanks, Pete. So just before we get into the, uh, the UC support hub in more detail, just a bit of background in relation to our uh, UC journey in Wakefield. Uh, so the, the benefit was launched in, in the Wakefield area in April 2016 for new single claimants. And within the first year of UC, we have 420 WDH claim, tenants claiming UC. Uh, we're currently got a caseload of 448 tenants. So the next stage of the rollout for us uh, is the full digital service, which comes in in November 2018. Uh, when we expect to see an additional 3,000 tenants uh, claim UC within the first year of full digital. Uh, ultimately, at full rollout of UC, we expect to have a, a, around 10,000 tenants claiming UC with some element of housing cost element included, uh, based on our current working HHP claim rate. We feel, we feel that, the, that UC represents the biggest challenge to income management we have seen and that UC fundamentally challenges our traditional revenue streams and the sector's typical approach to income management. In the life service, we have experienced similar problems to the rest of the sector, including six week break causing hardship for tenants, delays in processing, and difficulties with after administration payments. However, we've used our overarching income management ethos and applied this to the challenges of UC to come up with an innovative solution our universal credit support hub approach. Uh, so in response to UC, we have piloted our person-centred approach uh, with the UC hub support consisting of our bespoke UC hub screen, which then automatically comes wraparound support from other sections of the business, especially from the debt team, cash-wise, and our revenues team. Uh, identified tenants can then receive tailored support from across the business, with 41% of our tenants on UC uh, taking up the offer of cash-wise support. As Peter has already outlined, we've also launched our unique Cashwise Financial Inclusion Database to help support tenants through the challenges of UC and allocated a dedicated Cashwise officer to support tenants through the initial, initial UC claims process. In addition, in order to upskill our workforce, we've also rolled out a bespoke UC e-learning module to over a thousand employees across the business and we'll look at options to deliver similar functionality to tenants ahead of the rollout of the full digital service. So moving on then to look at our UC hub screen in more detail, uh, the hub screen represents the cornerstone of our response to universal credit in Wakefield, allowing us to identify UC claimants at the earliest possible opportunity. This internally developed tool sits within our existing housing management systems and provides functionality to empower frontline services to deal with the challenges of UC. The screen also produces automated forms such as standardised UC event statements and automated upper applications, reducing the time consuming data entry and eliminating administrative error. As such, we estimate that automated documentation from the UC hub has saved us over 200 hours of officer time in the first year of UC alone, with savings increasing as UC caseload grows. This allows officers to, have the time to spend their time better directly supporting tenants. The hub screen also allows us to track UC claims in the system and generates workflows to other teams via automated emails. Ultimately, the UC hub screen helps us to identify UC claims quickly, provide the relevant info to tenants and the DWP to ensure prompt payment, and also highlight the tenancy to appropriate internal support mechanisms. So turning now to look at our UC reporting, we've built up a suite of automated management reporting around the UC hub screen. 
which helps us to stay on top of our UC caseload and its impact on the business on a daily basis. Currently, we draw out a data extract that retrieves all the information from the UC hub screen, which can then be used to assess the caseload and monitor emerging trends. We also have a daily subscribed caseload report highlighting the number of current tenants on UC and the arrears that was around to the rest of the business. In addition, we also have scheduled UC workflow reporting to prompt after applications at the relevant time and also to highlight terminating tenancies where an APRA is in place to avoid overpayments. This functionality allows us to report quickly and easily on UC, promoting confidence in our response across the business. On top of this, clear reporting from the Cashwise Financial Inclusion Database is also utilised to highlight positive support outcomes for UC claimants. So alongside the UC support, we have also looked to introduce further functionality to support our overall response to UC throughout 2017. We've also developed UC specific arrears logic within our bespoke response to arrears program, which has further automated our systems and allowed our debt teams to monitor and support tenants on UC more effectively. Additionally, we've also developed bespoke programming, which interrogates bank files for upper payments and posts them automatically to the correct rent account future proof in our business against the increasing scale of upper payments received as our UC caseload increases. We've also developed our mobile working platform so that updates from neighbourhood officers across the business quickly feeds back into the UC support hub to prompt necessary actions and interventions. And going forward, we also look to integrate the DWP's landlord portal into our UC support hub mechanisms. So looking at our evolving functionality around the UC support hub um, to address the evolving challenges of UC, as hinted at in the last slide, we've also recently gone live with the UC landlord portal, due to having a small number of properties which fall under a full digital service area. So now as well as feeding back to the DWP in relation to how the portal can further be enhanced to help landlords in the future, we will also look at options to develop our UC hub screen to pick up workflows and queues from the portal in order to further streamline our own processes. We, also, we will also embed additional self-service options and triage functionality ahead of the UC full digital rollout in Wakefield, such as the availability of tenancy agreements and rent information through our online tenant portal and the WDH app. In the meantime, we've also just gone live with automated UC rent verification forms as a new output from the UC hub screen a further efficiency that will also increase in line with our increasing caseload. So just to tie up on the key themes around our UC support hub, uh, the ethos behind the hub is to provide innovative tools to ensure that frontline services feel empowered to meet the challenges of UC and can identify UC claims at the first opportunity, signposting them to the relevant support. In line with our approach to income management, we automate this support wherever possible to deal with the increasing caseload of UC and standardise information to ensure consistency, create efficiencies and reduce error. We also use management reporting to monitor, monitor UC impacts on tenants and the business to offer, and also to offer assurance around UC risk. Most importantly, however, as the UC challenge evolves, we must also continue to evolve our own functionality and approach to address changing demands and incre the increased scale of UC. Ultimately, it's through this approach that we will assist our tenants on UC, UC to transition effectively onto the new benefit without risking their tenancy sustainment. So we're now ready for our final poll of the webinar. So I'll pass you back to the CIH. Thanks very much. And uh, yeah, a massive challenge, as you've just heard, uh, dealing with the, the, the challenge of universal credit, a huge change. And uh, we're interested to know in this final poll question, uh, do you have a bespoke solution to address the challenges of universal credit? And again, we'll leave the poll open for about a minute. And we're really interested to hear what your responses are.
Okay, you can see there um, that again, uh, yes is 13%, uh, no is 38%, and in development, 44%. I guess in a way, Pete, given the scale of the challenge and the way the rollout's working, that's probably not unexpected, is it? No, no, that's true. Yeah, very true. So does that bring, right. is that the end of your, your presentation, Pete? Just about, we've just got a couple, just one more point to it, and then that's it, yeah. Um, okay, so carry on. Thank you. Yeah. So on, on, our, on our final slide here, um, you can just see really the UK Housing World logo. And we just want to touch upon that by embedding our approach across our teams, we've been able to deliver outstanding performance for the business, as well as a high quality service for our tenants. And this has resulted in winning the UK Housing World early this year in the outstanding approach to income management category. And this is obviously something that we're really proud of at the WDH here. So that does bring us now to the end of our presentation. So if any, you have any questions, we're happy to take those. Yeah, that's great. Thanks so much, Pete. Uh, we have had quite a lot of questions um, during uh, during the presentations. I'm going to work through them one by one, and hopefully we can get through uh, through everybody's. Some of them quite specific, practical questions; others more general. So, we'll go right back to um, to uh, Xi N Li, who asked uh, about the rotor and how that works. I was interested uh, about that as well, actually, Pete. So, um, I, I wonder how much of a culture change that was. For your organization and whether there were any challenges involved in, in in terms of staff going from presumably working sort of more regular hours to to working rotors on evening and weekends and, and she was interested to know um, how the rotor actually works which i guess is a similar question hi it's chris i'll, I'll take this one yeah yeah obviously as i explained in the culture we've actively recruited people that are interested in this role and set out in our job descriptions quite clearly that the role would need to be around business need and Saturday and Sunday and evening workings is part of their contract. Um, so because we've gone through a recruitment process, we've actually got people that, that want to work those hours. Um, uh, in terms of their commitments, we, we, we get the commitments like seven days in advance. So we know who's going to be working on the evenings and weekends. And basically, from my point of view, it's about demonstrating a, a layer of flexibility um, that allows the business to meet its uh, particular needs, which for us is obviously to support customers and um, achieve our core business objectives to ensure the cash flow is maintained. And sometimes that means as more people enter work that we need to be available at different times, which is why we start on this journey. I think from cash flow perspective as well, it is, in, it is built into the uh, job description, like Chris mentioned, to work evening and weekends. But it's not always suitable to meet tenants during the day. Some of them are obviously working. So we have to be have that flexibility within the team to be willing to work outside hours. And all the all the officers are, are absolutely on board with that. So it's not really an issue for us here. Yeah, it's really interesting, as you say, really mi mirroring other services, I guess, that, that people would access and, and, and doing so in a way that they would expect to access those services as well, really. So um, she also asked a very um, sort of practical question. She was interested to know what mobile solution that you use. We use um, a capita product called Total Mobile, um, and that's basically a platform that we use on um, um, our tablets. Um, and the way we approached it, just to give you a bit of background, is we actually took some out of our service area, um, and they specialised in it to ensure that um, we got the product that we wanted, so that all staff felt engaged when we actually rolled it out. Because uh, sometimes the big mobile device is actually getting staff engaged in the product but if you remember in the sort of evolution of the process of, of what what will make their job easier we found that again staff are actively um, over the moon to use it because obviously it makes their job easier Great, that's really useful. Hopefully, that, that answers your question, G. Um, two other questions now, which are which are kind of related, really, asked by two separate people. So, Asad uh, asked a question: How many staff are in the Cashwise team? Uh, and we also then had a question from Natalie, which is sort of on a on a kind of similar similar um, similar note, really, which is that will Cashwise still be able to provide one-on-one uh, -on -one support when your universal credit levels uh, reach a higher level of claimants? Uh, or do you have another strategy for when your caseload reaches that level? Yeah, so the, the cash rise team is uh, currently nine people in the cash rise team in total. Uh, seven of those um, cash rise officers that we have do, do it, providing the visits. Um, 
In terms of obviously increasing demand for UC, uh, we'll still be able to provide support. We'll do a lot more office based phone charging to cut out unnecessary visits. And obviously, the day space product that I touched on previously in my presentation, that's going to really streamline things for us and help us to have more time with tenants. Um, so, we think we're either equipped to obviously continue to meet the challenges that are ahead. Um, but obviously, we will obviously continue to evolve and adapt. And, and that may involve us doing a lot more office based triaging, like I touched on, uh, for those cases that perhaps don't necessarily need one to one support and just leaving the offices free for who do need the direct support on a one to one basis. Yeah, thanks. Um, uh, another question from uh, from Clayton Charles. Um, he says, I'd be interested in what you feel is the biggest motivator for the debt team. Is it cash collected per officer? Is it successful visits completed? Is it arrears performance per officer, et cetera? Uh, well, we, I think the, the, we are very performance driven um, and, and we actively try to make that as interesting as possible um, for, for, for the people out in the field so that they hit their performance targets. But I, I, the way our team set up and the way it's structured, they get equal benefit from keeping people in their properties, from working with internal partners um, to sustain tenancies um, because they're actively interested in the role. And, and that's why it's important that you get the cultural people that are involved in your team right, because if you don't, then it doesn't really work. Yeah, of course, goes back to that that cultural thing, doesn't it? I guess really. Um, a couple more questions from from Assad as well, which are which are related. Um, first of all, do you have automation of text messages to enable more home visits? And then, sort of related to that, really, he they've also asked out of the number of home visits, were these figures in relation to successful visits, i.e., tenants were in or were they attempted visits? I'll pick that one up uh, to start with. That's 41,000 visits that we've carried out, but because of the hours that we work, um, we're running around 60% uh, positive contact rates. So um, I'm sure you guys with the maths will work that one out. Um, in terms of the text messaging, um, it, the text messaging routines are led amongst uh, specific careers roles and the centres pass to complement the visiting routine. Sometimes it means that we might not need to visit because a customer may return um, contact following the text message. Um, on top of all that, we have um, a sort of hub of text messages that our debt officers can access and they're just standardised um, text messages that will be linked to the account and we'll send to a mobile device if they're at the push of a button. Yeah, thanks again. And, and a final question for, from Assad actually was um, around, um, uh, do you have an algorithm to predict the tenant payment behavior or do you have individual payment plans for tenants? Well, I think in response to that, we don't have sort of a specific algorithm to predict tenant behavior because I think in the sort of the emerging environment, especially in relation to universal credit, that's just going potentially going to tie a lot of organization in, 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 in knots to predict payment payment plans. Obviously, we have um, agreements in place on, the, on, on, on our system, which then, uh, worst they fail, that gets drawn back into the automatic career logic that we've got in place. Um, just to add to that, um, the arrangements on the system, we do it link to our sort of the, the payments that people make. We can see on a daily basis how much has been paid by various different payment methods. And um, we can get down to the to individual properties, street level in terms of cash flow against the projected rent or for even a particular street. So we know where to target our resources effectively based on payment profiles. And, and we've developed that around um, the UC uh, introduction because we, we appreciate that we may need to move away from traditional areas performance matrix and, and look at um, operational cash flow at a more local level. Yeah, thanks for that. That's really useful. Um, some some more questions coming through, which is great. And you know, we still have a few minutes left. So if you if you if you would like to ask a question, please uh, please continue to do so. Um, Rob Anscombe has asked, prior to Universal Credit, what percentage of your tenants were receiving housing benefit? It's running around fifty four percent of our thirty one thousand properties. So around about anywhere between fifteen and seventeen thousand uh, tenancies could be affected at any one time. Obviously, that deviates through the four weekly cycle. 
That's great, thanks. And a question from Michael Bruce as well. Are you using the DWP landlord portal yet? Uh, yes, we are using that, but only on a very small scale, because um, obviously we've only got a small number of properties, as we said in the in the presentation, that fall under a full digital service area. Great, thank you. Um, and another question from Clayton Charles now. Um, can all the team take payments, whether over the phone or in person? Yep, they've all got facilities on their mobile devices or they've got use of a mobile phone where they can ring an automated, automated payment line. Um, so, yeah, payments can be made in, in a customer's home and the, everybody's got access with the work within the debt and cash wise teams. That's great, thank you. So yeah, that's that sort of brings us to an end of the questions we've got so far. But as I say, a few minutes left. I'm I've got a couple of questions um, that I wanted to ask. And one was you've sort of touched on this throughout, really. But I'm really interested um, in the point that obviously, you know, let's sort of be honest about it. People don't really like to talk about money, do they? Generally, let alone with uh, their landlords. So I'm really interested to know how you know you've taken us through a great presentation here, which is obviously a really robust service that the, the biggest challenge I can see here is how do you go to this sort of automation and, and, and kind of in a sense moving away from from face to face contact and still retain that trust and, and get to understand which of your tenants really needs this help? I think that that comes from the intelligence within the arrears program as in we said that there's progressive and uh, regressive um, logic in the system which means that we always, um, the system always prompts the correct form of contact in terms of automation. Um, and that's reflected in the fact that our satisfaction levels are as high as they've been and we've had no formal complaints this year, which obviously given the, the nature of the, the, the sort of industry that we're in, you would expect quite a few uh, complaints just because of, the, of how the service is delivered. And, and, and sort of the way that the, the debt and cash wise team work together, they kind of, um, create a trust with the customer because cash wise are like more of a supporting element but they've been referred by our debt team so once the once to the the support uh, i think that support and trust goes forward um for the journey of the wdh tenancy with us i think it just to add to that as well i think this one-to-one -one support is available for those tenants who do need it so like chris says automation is suitable for some but those who do need that additional support is there for them so we do make sure that we find that, that ideal balance really I think as well, just to add to that, because of our sort of geographic con concentration within Wakefield area, we're very lucky in the fact that uh, most of the time when our tenants have, are experiencing difficulties or issues, they're probably going to be coming and talking to somebody within the organisation about those problems. The trick, as Chris says, is to have the automated systems in place to make sure that, that information is picked up promptly and that gets to the necessary team and needs to offer that support to that individual in, in quickest time scale possible. That's a really great answer, thank you. And I think, I think to a point there, you, as you said, you, you're really the proof's in the pudding, isn't it? And your satisfaction rates are as, as high as they've been. So you, you've obviously been able to, to maintain that support. Some more questions coming through now. This one from Joseph Lunny, who has asked, how does all of your excellent strategy translate to leaseholders and shared owner arrears performance? Difficult one. It's managed outside of, um, it's managed by our leaseholder team. So the, the debt and cash wise team only very rarely get involved in, in that process. And, and, and to be fair, the share ownership element is only on a small scale at this moment in time. Okay, that's great, thanks. And uh, another question from Asad, which is how many debt officers slash income collection officers do you have in comparison to the cash wise team? So I think Pete's touched on the yeah, cash We've got seven frontline cash rise offices and, and we've got um, uh, 18.5 full-time equivalents in terms of um, debt officers. It, it essentially works out around a ratio of one full-time equivalent to around 900 properties that they manage. Yeah, thanks very much for that. And um, and another question from from Asad as well. Do do your uh, does your income collection team do evening and weekend visits, or is that just cash wise? Some fairly specific stuff here, but uh, but useful for people, uh, I'm sure, nonetheless. Both team both teams uh, work evenings and weekends. Yeah, around obviously the needs of the tenants and the needs of the business. That's really great. Well, I think that that. 
that pretty much rounds up um, today's webinar. I have to say thanks, thanks very much for for the huge amount of detail that you've uh, you've given us. It's really Really, really useful. Uh, I'm sure for everybody to have a, a, an insight into um, into what's obviously a very successful um, uh, income management uh, approach. Um, thank you for your time, and thanks for everybody for joining us and and, and for your questions. Um, as was explained at the start, the the, the webinar will be shared around uh, a recording of it will be shared around in the next 48 hours, um, and there'll be a short survey at the end of this. Would be really grateful if you could fill that in. Thanks everybody for joining us, and thanks again to all of our presenters today. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Thank you. unmuted hi thank you everybody for attending the seminar I'd like to thank Chris Pete and Phil for presenting it uh, and I'd like to thank Steve for chairing it there's now going to be a short feedback questionnaire uh, if you could find the time to complete it and suggest topics for any webinars you'd like to see in the future that would be great just to remind you that it has been recorded and you will receive an email with it in the next 48 hours if you'd like further information on upcoming webinars, please go to www.cah.org forward slash webinars. Thank you for your interest.